Hi everybody, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. Site number two is going to be a really wonderful place, the Penn Dixie Outdoor Educational Center located in Western New York. If you look at the map, you can see that it's located where Interstate 90 crosses Route 20 and 20A in Western New York, right in that area next to the Great Lakes. It's a... Uh, Probably one of the best places in the U.S. So I would say definitely top five places in the U.S. for collecting fossils. They say it's number one. Well, you be the judge. They definitely have really good fossils. The What's really good about them is a lot of the fossils that you find here, these mid uh, to late Devonian fossils, all have a lot of their original material, a lot of their shells. Uh, so you can actually get a trilobite, not just a cast, but the actual... Uh, shell of trilobites and all the other creatures of uh, about 380 million years ago back New York when New York was underwater. As you can see this is um, from our geologic map that this whole region is Devonian. Well it's a really great place to, to start out um, if you are a new collector. It's uh, actually a great place for any collector. If you need tools you can actually rent tools there. They have hammers and chisels and things like that. I find pry bars work really well and actually I'll show you what tools I'm going to be taking in the next clip. So these are the type of tools that I bring to Penn Dixie when I go there. First of all, I always take my trusty four pounder that's pretty much good for with any type of fossil hunting. With Penn Dixie though, a couple things that are really handy are to have buckets and a hand truck. This way you can go ahead and put all your finds in a bucket, maybe wrap them up with a little newspaper or bubble wrap just to protect them, but wheel them out because it's about mm, maybe a quarter mile from the site back to uh, where the parking lot is. Also take a nice big sledge because they're going to be driving a lot of pry bars underneath big blocks of rock. And pry bars, you can have small pry bars, like this little blue one. Probably a bad color because the rocks are blue-gray too, as you paint the yellow. And I also use these long pry bars. Long pry bars will go underneath the rock, hammer them in, lift up. I also like this particular one. This one, my sister and brother-in-law gave me when they were moving and cleaning out their garage. And it's really strange because it has this kind of wedge built on the edge of it. And I really wasn't sure what that was. It's actually a part of the metal. It's not even soldered on there. It turns out that this is a 19th century tool for collecting ice, getting blocks of ice from ice houses. But it turns out that it works really well for getting under blocks of rock and lifting them up. Morning class. Today we're at the Penn Dixie Outdoor Educational Site looking for fossils. Uh, this is Devonian rock, middle, Devo uh, middle to late Devonian rock, very good for trilobites, things like that. In this case we know that the fossils tend to be towards what they call the waterline because of the way this area floods. Uh, at the waterline if you break out blocks probably about 12 inches to 18 inches start cracking up in these big blocks from the very productive area, that's really your best chance to find fake ops trilobites and sometimes green ops trilobites. There may also be a whole variety of other fossils and in other areas where there's different members of the formations here exposed, you find different fossils. Go ahead. Wondering where the fossils are. Where are you can find them? Are they all the way around? In this they, area? they tend to be in this one hard layer below the overburden. Towards the tops, we tend to find more green ops. Uh, that bit further down, four or five inches into this block, maybe a little more, is where you'll get the 
uh, plates of fake, uh, fake cops if we're really lucky. Now Gus, the guy in the yellow shirt over there, just uh, broke a rock and found one that has at least four trilobites. Looks like multiple trilobites inside it. So he's going to take it home and carefully drill it. Got a big thing to split. I've born the Bronx, a poor child, poor parents. Okay, tell us what just happened a few minutes ago with your wonderful rehabs. <laughs> he lost it. He ran away. I thought he was dead, but he was only knocked out temporarily. He's gonna have it. Yeah, but I... he got away before I could have hit him with that. Seriously, what you hitting these uh, layers of shale on the side? Feeling in the back. Go back, try to get thin layers. Try to get the thin layer. Looking for the looking for the layer that the fossils are in. You get one out. You want to peel that back. Nice trailer. Nice trailer. Do you know how old the shell is? Old as Mike. Oh, okay. It's about 380 million years. <laughs> oh, you want straight answers. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be the straight guy. Anything else? He just, I just found one. I got the negative. He clobbered a green ups. Ah, a beautiful green ups. I found the negative. So it's a, it can be frustrating, but it's a lot of fun. Okay, so and rewarding. And you meet nice people. Oh, thank you very much. Myself. Thank you very much. Seeing the light of day for 280 million years. 380, 380 million years. Give or take 5 million. Thank you very much. I'm Jerry Bastino, and I run the appendixy site. And we're finding trilobites. And we're not making them, they're actually coming out of the ground. As they, were, as they died and got buried in the mud, and then they turned into shale. You know, and now they're coming out again. A little energy. You know, and this one, you just turned over the rock, and that was it. Pretty nice, huh? Yes, very nice. Well, you got some nice, uh, nice trial bites here yourself. I had a very good day today. Well, about soon. eight full trial bites out of one particular rock. Yeah. Well, yeah. I hope you're not done because the sun didn't set yet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we got some nice here. Sir. Yes, that slab has one full one and a you number take of. Take that four. back with you. You, you are using our brace about or something, you know. Yes. Yeah, this is going to be a nice roller, by the way. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know if his head is here, but pretty close. Well, I think he's, a little, he's a little bit fragile, too. A damaged head here, yeah. and the tail's buried. Yeah. No, you That's good. Would you like to tell us a little bit about Pendixie? Oh, Pendixie is the number one fossil park in the United States. You know, been right back. And we have an inexhaustible supply of fossils here, 380 million years old. And they, uh, we let everyone that comes in collect and keep everything they find. And uh, we're hoping to find the instructors and get pictures and put them up on our website. So if you find anything really great today, you know, we'd love to have it up there. We're looking for a tiny Laird right now, and then we'd love to get a picture of that up there. We've actually had two found up here, and I'm still waiting for a picture. Oh, very um, nice. Yeah. So, you know, we're always looking for new things. So there's always the opportunities, exploration, discovery, everything else. Learning about what the area was like 380 million years ago is. 
science, science, natural science education. Plus, we do also astronomy programs and birding programs. And uh, we have wetlands here, turkey, deer, and coyote in the site. I don't know if you guys saw any deer today, but the deer have been running around. And uh, a whole bunch of things like that. Somebody's chasing me down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes. Tell us what you found, Ray. Now, now I found some real nice horn garls. <laughs> this is what we're after. The trilobites. Got three of them in this one piece. That one's a little unrolled. But... Master Ray. And the only one who does better at this than me is holding the camera. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, I know about that. Mr. Christopher. <laughs> Sir Chris. Everybody have a good time today? Everybody yeah, had a great, great time today. <laughs> Although... But I've got my six-foot pry bar, my wedges, everything else. So I borrow a sledgehammer, we'll get some chunks out. All right, um, I've got another 16-pound in the car that I'm not using right now. You want to use it? If we, hey, once we get the spikes up here, well, when we do this, you just hot hammer them away like this. Excuse me, excuse me, do you have a release to film? Okay. <laughs> it's not quite half an inch on here. Additional. Yep. I wonder if they try to see where the notch is. After that, it's pretty much when it gets close to your foot. You got steel toes? Yeah, no. But the boots are steel. I do. Joseph does. Joseph! Yeah, yeah see what? I have them in the car. Then right. start hammering again. But that's the whole thing. You don't overtire yourself and you wait. You'll get a split back in here. I guarantee that. It might crack here. It might crack here, but you'll see the crack going on. You've seen them enough here. Oh, yes. You know that sound. You see, his foot's smaller than mine. I got these extra wide shoes. Yeah. But you can see where it's still going in on his. It's the last time anybody said his foot's smaller than mine. <laughs> That's enough right. on that one. There you go. Now you go to the other one. That's good. You do too much on one, Bill. The big thing is you don't overtire yourself. Yeah. We'll run it in this way. Well, that's going to be a nice. Oh, that's is... You know? This crack is a natural crack here for the door. Yeah, that's okay. Should I hit it again? Just a second. Let's get a clean circuit. Oh man, it's going right in. On one side? Just because the whole thing is coming up. I'm doing it. It is video. The whole thing was coming up. There you go. Oh, you got it. Look at that block. You might be able to just leave that right in place and split it on the on the side like that. Now this is what I would tell you, I take it straight to the car and wrap it up and uh, show, show it to Jerry because... Actually, if you put it on my wagon over there, I've got some special shocks on my wagon, I'll take it out for you. Which one's your car? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to break, so this deception's going to come off. We have crazy Yeah, here's... Did you just find that line yeah. now? No. Oh, I split it. I split it. It's somewhere there. Mm, yeah, no way. I'm going to ask if you split it out of the wall. Yeah, I go, we got it out of the wall. Okay, and, uh, so is this layer right here? Yeah. yeah. That middle of that layer? Uh, it could be, yeah, it was roughly. <laughs> uh, I think it would just be the top. Oh, yeah. No. There's a water. Okay, class. This I've got to pull up another bolt, or at least try, and we'll see if I can strong it up to this one. Put some wedges under it first, like between the other paleontologists doing. 
Now we're going to uh, TV nice and loose. Yeah, I have a pry bar under here. And it is coming up nicely. Bigger than I thought though, it's going back pretty far. Yes. I cut and got to readjust the tool. Is it working? Okay, I'm gonna try from the other side now. Seems to be loose enough, but also quite heavy, so it's a matter of getting leverage. Just talking about pulling out these big layers. About a um, big ball, they're out. They start breaking from the side. And here is one of those trial bikes that we're looking for. It looks like a, probably a complete one. Here's the other half of it. At this point, what I'll do is take it home and, well, after breaking out the boulder, breaking out the boulder, take it home and do the fine work once I have it on a small piece. I'd also like to point out that at Penn Dixie, we were spending most of our time working in the fossil pit where you find trial bikes, but there's a lot of other nice things over there, including trails. These pictures here are one of the nature trails that actually goes sort of down a ravine that leads to a stream. And there are fossils in the walls of the banks of this uh, little uh, trail here. Also, if you look at towards the top of some of these piles of rock, there's a much thicker limestone that tends to be in the upper layers near the surface. It's called the Kitchener limestone. And it's known for also having some very good fossils. I found one particular block that had a lot of cephalopods, three, uh, at least three on one side. Nicely preserved cephalopods showing up in this rock from the Kitchener limestone, also found at Mendixie. never fails. As soon as I start getting ready to record, somebody turns the leaf blower off. Hopefully this won't be disturbing for us. But anyway, we're back. We finally came back from the Penn Dixie site. Uh, it was a lot of fun collecting there. That was the fun part. Now comes the rewarding part. Now comes the part where we're going to drill away at those little trial bites that we found, getting rid of all the excess rock and stuff that's in the way so we can end up with a nice, hey, for lucky museum quality, little trial bites. There's several different things I'm going to be using. Two drills. One is that larger, um, called uh, this larger Blue Hawk drill, which has uh, some bits that came with it. Um, also, because these trilobites are small, I got a little Dremel drill, and I have a friend who gave me some of these uh, dental drill bits. These uh, he's a dentist, and uh, he's able to give me a couple of uh, drill bits that uh, he no longer uses. They were sterilized with an autoclave so they can be used. Um, so I'll be using this tiny little dental drill bit to go ahead and clear away anything around the trilobites. Now I'm not going to actually touch the trilobites but that would damage them. So I'm going to try to avoid touching them as much as possible. I'll just come very very close with this little drill. Uh, the reason I use two drills is because it's kind of a pain in the neck to change drill bits and so want to keep going from big to small. It, I found from experience it's best to just pick one or two bits that you really like and just keep working with those rather than switching and sometimes they don't work the way you want them to. Um, this is uh, this is what's worked best for me, for me in the past. One other thing I also want to tell you is I bought a little microscope online that uh, will help me do close-ups of these trilobites. 
So I'm going to play with this and hopefully get it to uh, work the way it says. And if it does, I'll be able to show you some nice close-ups of actually drilling on these trial lines. So here we have one of the trilobites. I started with one that's not the best. It's probably not all there. It's mostly buried, not in great shape. So this is a good one to practice first. Even if you do this frequently, it's always good to start off with one that uh, is not your best one. So you can just get the hang of doing it really well. I'm starting with a very large drill first. This is going to peel away all the extra rock around the edges. When I want to get closer, I'm going to use the much smaller dental drill. This is one of the large ones that comes with the dr drill kit. And next you'll see me switching to the smaller one. Now it's time for the smaller drill. Notice that the fossil's wet. I used some water to clean off what I took off with the larger drill. And it, the water is also helping to dissolve some of the limestone around it. Limestone is water soluble. With the smaller drill, I'm not, come, I'm not going to touch the fossil itself. I want to come very close, but as much as possible, avoid touching the original material of the fossil. I don't want to scratch it up. Now that we've worked on some of the lesser quality trilobites, it's time to start moving on to some of the better ones. This one looks like a really fairly complete trilobite. If you notice, I'm going to be hovering very close to the trilobite. But I'm going to try not to actually touch it. I'm going to go to where the sediments have filled in in between the different segments and go right above, maybe even touch the sediment when I can, but trying to avoid touching the trilobite itself as much as possible. This will prevent you from getting scratches and uh, things like that on the otherwise uh, fairly pristine shell. Okay, now that we've gotten some of those lesser quality ones cleaned up, it's time to go ahead and work on some of the better ones. This was a really nice trilobite, that, uh, or a pair of trilobites actually, that came out. Unfortunately, the tail is damaged. That's really not going to be a big problem though, because the other half of the rock actually has that little segment of tail that's missing. So I'm going to try and ease that out and glue that back onto this trilobite. But for now, I'm working on the drilling. I'm getting all these little sediments out in between all the different parts of the trilobite. I, uh, anywhere that there's gray, I'm trying only to touch the gray. I don't want to touch the trilobite. I want to stay away from that as much as possible. Because once again, you know, the drill will scratch it. You want this to have this nice, beautiful black shell that's naturally come out of Pendixie this way. I'm cleaning up as much as I can, being as careful as I can not to touch the actual shell itself. And looking at the neighboring trilobite, the second of these two right next to each other, this one looks like there is some damage. That's okay though. We, you know, it is what it is. We'll have a nice, honest, but slightly damaged uh, pair of trilobites where we can um, I'll clean them up very nicely. I'm going to be adding a little bit of water uh, also to help loosen up the limestone. That limestone is water soluble. You can actually see it tend to break up a little bit and turn into this muddy stuff on this uh, semi-microscopic scale. So the limestone's breaking up. It's coming off. I'll do this uh, in all the places where the limestone is still exposed. Okay, so giving it a little bit more water now, getting it all cleaned up. Kind of tedious. Going to have to hit the same couple of places again a few times to get this all out. But when it's finally done, we're going to see a really nice trilobite. If you look here at the still, it shows how much we've gotten off it. It's not completely done yet. I'm actually going to work on this one a little bit more. 
Um, but it's at a good point to really show you how far I got. And um, this will be a nice, one of the better trilobites that have come out of this site this time. Isn't that beautiful? Well, here's what a very nice one, one of the really good ones came out looking like after it's been prepped. Now, you may remember from all the work that I did that there was a large block and some other stuff that's gonna take me a lot longer to prep. So what I'm gonna do, instead of making this a terribly long video, kind of like my first one, I'll keep this short, but I will make a second one for anybody who wants to see what the prepping of those larger multi trilobite blocks end up looking like. One final footnote. I wanted to show you this piece here. It started out as just one trilobite showing up in the rock. But the more that I drilled, the more trilobite I saw. And as I gently went around each one of these little trilobites, a couple of them were actually whole. Some of them may, uh, may not be, some definitely are not. But all this was found in just, from just one small trial bite peeking through the rock. So it was a great day at Pendixie. We all had fun and came home with quite a few really nice treasures. So that I think they're right. I think they are, if not the, they're definitely within the top five fossil collecting sites in the uh, U.S. that anybody can go and collect fossils at. Thank you very much to the people at Pendixie for preserving such a very nice fossil collecting area. Well, hope you had fun. Like I said, I'm gonna make a second video uh, showing me prepping out the blocks that had those multiple trilobites, the larger blocks, uh, for those who want to see more. Thank you very, thank you very much for watching. And once again, uh, if you like these and you want me to make more, hit the subscribe button and you'll force me to keep making more of these. Have a great day.